Hello again, Steve Zuckerman with the third installment of our multiple sclerosis series. This is the final one. I'm sorry, I'm sure you're all disappointed, but uh, maybe there'll be more, who knows? And this uh, one is gonna talk about the management of multiple sclerosis. Now I have to say that uh, he uh, started practicing neurology in 1986 and for about the first 10 years uh, management of MS was typical of neurological disorders ascribing to the uh, diagnose and adios theory of neurology but since that time there have been tremendous strides made in uh, helping us uh, treat MS. Now the first consideration would be what to do when there is an acute attack and we usually employ steroid medication and uh, a couple of words about the attack. It shouldn't be anything really minor such as uh, minor sensory symptoms etc. It should be something that really causes a significant disability or dysfunction and it's probably best to use intravenous steroid medication, methylprednisolone, one gram a day for three or up to five days with or without an oral taper. And I think that more recent evidence shows that this oral taper is probably not adding a lot of benefit. But more importantly, for the long-term course of the disease, there are several disease-modifying agents. Now, I have to emphasize that the use of steroids does help to reduce the duration of any given attack, but it does actually nothing in terms of long-term prognosis of the disease. And we'll talk about prognosis a little later on in this video. Um, so we have older medications, which are these injections, sort of uh, mi middle age uh, treatment and then the newer ones are the oral medications. In terms of the, well all of the medications themselves are immunomodulatory or immunosuppressant actually in some cases. But um, there are two interferons, interferon beta 1A, which is both Avonex and Rebif. Avonex uh, is a once a week intramuscular injection, probably the weakest of all of the disease-modifying therapies. Rebif is given three times a week, maybe one Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and um, it's a very good medicine. And this category of medicines has been shown to reduce the um, rate of relapse by about one-third, by about 33 percent. Uh, the other ways that we measure the effectiveness of these medications is to um, see the effect on the MRI scan in terms of new lesions and enhancing lesions, which indicate activity of disease. And the other measurement would be, of course, to determine their functional status over the course of a long-term uh, treatment course. The other interferon is beta seron, um, and then there is a polymer called copaxone, which is a everyday sub-Q injection, but they recently came out with a higher dose given at a three time a week dosing interval. So all of these are pretty much uh, equivalent again, except for the Avonex is the weaker. Then um, Tysabri came out and then was taken off the market and then came out again. Tysabri, natalizumab, is a monoclonal antibody which prevents the lymphocyte from adhering to the endothelial cells and therefore can't cross the blood-brain barrier to affect the oligodendrocytes and myelin. Um, this has been shown in a study to reduce the uh, relapse rate up to 60% and showed about a 92% reduction 
in new MRI scan lesions at the end of one year. The problem with Tysabri is that it is so effective that it acts as an immunosuppressant and has been associated with the development of a potentially and usually fatal disease called um, PML. And PML is a progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy found to be related to the um, JC virus. And so there is a risk stratification program that's employed when we use this medication and the three factors which uh, determine your risk for developing PML are uh, first, and first and foremost whether you in fact are JC pos JCV positive. And if you are, then there's two other cofactors, um, your duration of treatment and whether or not you've been treated with prior immunosuppressants. And so um, because of these not insignificant numbers, most patients who are JC posit JCV positive, particularly if they've been treated for more than two years, will be taken off of Tysalbert because of that risk for um, PML. Novantrone, I don't think, is used very much anymore. It's a, it's just a chemotherapy agent, mitoxantrone. And then since 2010 and forward, there have been the introduction of three oral medications, first of which is fingolimod or gelenia, um, also up to about 60% relapse rate reduction. It requires that the patient gets screened for any possibility of macular degeneration, uh, also for the presence of um, varicella zoster virus because it can be associated with the relapse of that condition, and uh, any underlying heart problems, particularly conduction system problems because this medication has been associated with arrhythmias and in fact the first dose has to be given orally of course under a uh, strict six hour cardiac supervision to make sure that the patient does not get a bradyarrhythmia and hypotension. Uh, teraflutamide or Baggio, um, another newer oral medication, side effects being mostly GI and some flushing. And then most recently has been this dimethyl fumarate, Tecfidera, which is also very effective, like the other ones in this category, does not require any of those um, pretreatment evaluations in order to utilize uh, and uh, works well. Jeleni, interestingly, works by sequestering lymphocytes in lymph tissue. And in my experience, patients get um, very low total lymphocyte counts. Um, and it's a little bit unnerving to see how low their white blood cell count gets. Uh, now, besides these disease-modifying treatments, which in my experience have really changed the outcome and prognosis for MS, there are other medications that we use to help uh, symptoms, various symptoms which occur very often, most commonly are spasticity, and so we use baclofen for spasticity. Orally, it's got very limited potential because of the uh, side effects that one gets at doses that are necessary to effectively treat increased muscle tone. And in those cases, if the muscle tone is considerable, we consider using the baclofen administered intrathecally via a pump. Um, pain medicines, 
bladder dysfunction is very common and so a lot of times patients also get seen by urologists in addition to the neurologists and, are and an various anticholinergic medications are used, bowel problems, uh, a lot of times fatigue is the overall biggest problem prompting the use either of uh, one of these medicines, Nuvigil or Provigil. Nuvigil is once a day, Provigil was twice a day, or even the uh, stimulant medications. And of course, there is uh, the, its toll on um, depression and even cognitive impairment is not uncommon in more long-term multiple sclerosis. And finally, a word about the time course of MS. This is the traditional breakdown that when you're first diagnosed, oh, sorry, a lot of these uh, text is cut off, have to fix that. You'll have the relapsing remitting at first in which you'll have an attack and get back almost to normal. Um, and in fact, in relapsing remitting, you should get back to normal. And then at a certain point in time, you can get secondary progressive multiple sclerosis with incomplete resolution of your symptoms and signs in between attacks. There is a primary progressive type of multiple sclerosis in which it just gets insidiously worse. And this is the type that happens most frequently in males. And then there is a um, progressive relapsing type in which they will have progressions but certain relapses in between. Now, the, one of the significant parts about the relapsing types is that they are the ones that are amenable to the disease-modifying therapies. This primary progressive type does not respond, and it's not really recommended that they um, get subjected to those disease-modifying therapies. In general, classically, uh, a third of patients with MS have a pretty benign clinical course and uh, doesn't really affect their lifestyle. Another third have these relapses and may get somewhat worse, and it impacts their function but not their overall longevity. And a third may do so bad that it may affect them to the point where they're significantly disabled. Uh, that's about it. So congratulations for having watched all of these videos, and good luck on this very challenging quiz, which I'm sure you'll love to take. Thanks. Bye-bye.